Good afternoon. My name is Otto Ballantyne, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about how to use inertial navigation technology or gyro mapping to obtain critical pipeline data, including as builds, band radius, uh, inclination assessment, and so forth. Uh, before I go into it, I would like to thank Jonathan and his team for organizing this event yet again. And uh, it's been well organized, and I will be definitely taking part for many years to come. So without further ado, let's jump in. Um, Reduct a little bit about us. We are uh, a leading developer of inertial navigation based mapping systems or gyro mapping uh, systems. And over the past 20 years, we've basically developed solutions for pretty much any underground utility and duct starting from 30 millimeters upwards. I like to start always with this picture because it kind of sums up what our issues are down under. Uh, you know, if, if we look at the, uh, the as builds of all of these utility owners and we lay them on top of each other, I'm sure this is not the picture we get. So there is a, an issue with legacy data and so forth about the accuracy of, of underground infrastructure. Um, it's not as bad as this, of course, all the time, but it kind of sums up where what we're facing. So uh, with all the sophisticated technologies to present and, and display and, and to visualize what's underground, it all comes down to the accuracy of the data that's fed into these systems. So let's talk about that a little bit. Gyro mapping, what is that actually? Well, basically a gyro mapping device, here you see one, is a device that has a, a, a unit, a sensor unit, and that sensor unit is passed through the pipe and it basically records its central axis. So the better it is aligned with the, with the orientation of the pipe, the better your result is. So fundamentally, it records the changes in heading, in pitch or inclination, in roll, and lastly, the odometer will tell it how what distance is traveled or what speed is traveling at. And it does this at 100 hertz or 100 samples per second. So that means if you're traveling at one meter per second, you get about a, a, a point per centimeter, which is high frequency. And I'll come back to that a little bit later. That's basically what this discussion is about to, to help you understand what benefits high frequency actually gives you compared to conventional locating and mapping technologies. So this information uh, is, is recorded inside the, the, the probe. And once it comes out, it's connected to the laptop uploaded and then create and created or, or merged actually with the entry and exit point coordinates. So we have an exit and an entry point. The tool has passed through the pipe. We don't know how it went from A to B. We just know it, it went in here and it came out there. But when you take the data from the tool, you tell the software the coordinate that you started at, the coordinate that you ended, it will then calculate this three-dimensional line. It's actually a three-dimensional line, and you see here the depth profile of that particular uh, horizontal drilling in this case. But it gives you an accurate view as to where that pipe is. That's as simple as it operation operationally is. Now, what is the benefit of using inertial navigation? You basically can use it in any utility. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's a duct, it goes from A to B, or even... If, even if you have an A point, we have some solutions. Um, but any utility, it will function. Any pipe material, and that's an important one. We have uh, PE or concrete or PVC, but also steel. Because the tool is on autonomous, in other words, we don't have any communication with the tool or don't need any communication with the tool as it's traveling. We don't need to send a signal out. So we can be in a cage of Faraday, as they call, an, an, a, call it in a, in a metal case. Um, so we can, we don't need to uh, be worried that signals get lost. Very important point is, as I mentioned before, we only need the entry and the exit coordinates as, as references to the, let's say the real world. We don't need to trace the tool or the probe as it's traveling from A to B. And that's an advantage because, for example, you can go to any depth as long as you know where it goes in and where it comes out. What happens in between doesn't really matter. So any depth is possible. You can use it next to electromagnetic noise 
generation generators as we call them so it's whether it's a power cable or a, a train track or anything like that or steel plating uh, um, yeah anything that normally would uh, interfere with with the locate with the traditional locating technologies inertial navigation doesn't have that issue we map at high point frequency and I'll try to visualize that a little bit so traditional methods of locating you're somewhere between three and ten meters let's say you have a point but because you have such infrequent points you start to miss things particularly in smaller ducts if you have a high frequency mapping technology you see that that dotted line already follows the contours of that particular pipe much closer and a little later in this presentation we will show you the benefits of that most importantly, or very important, it's open platform that in, 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 in our case, which means the output can be, can be directly uploaded into any of the popular GIS platforms or even Excel or anything like that. So we don't have any further conversion requirements to get it from our software into your GIS platform or whatever you're using. And that eliminates human error to a large extent. So. What do we use it for? Well, first of all, GIS platform management. If, you know, it creates an accurate as built uh, and it's uniform data. But more importantly, it is a perfect technology to verify the contractor's work and be a very key component in the contractor handover management. So if you have a, 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 a piece of network built by a contractor, it's not very healthy to receive an as-built from the contractor himself because he built it. It's better to have an independent software uh, or technology basically um, and decide whether the contractor's work is up to the uh, specifications uh, in the tender document. So for HDD, that can not only be the as-built, but it also can verify the band radius of a particular pipe, which is specifications for example in pressurized pipes uh, and in the water wastewater uh, segment we can provide you with a very very detailed inclination and great verification we have a special module for that to tell you whatever your specifications are how many samples are inside and outside like over here you see that the red ones are outside of the spec and the green ones are inside the spec and the spec is you know user defined so you decide what your specs are and then you can immediately see in one chart where it has or has not met your specifications for the existing uh, infrastructure uh, it's basically an up you know a, a, a method to upgrade old analog as builds um, this is uh, particularly true for a number of networks that were built fairly long ago and pretty much most of the telecom and data ducts that have been put into the ground in the 90s. Um, very poor mapping was done at that time and now we are mapping a lot of those uh, infrastructures to, to, to understand where they are and to avoid damage when <clears throat> work is going to be done near, near them. Um, the, the last one is maintenance planning. Uh, now there's a lot of static maintenance programs whereby uh, utilities say, okay, we will uh, we will manage or maintain a certain segment of pipe after X years of operation. Uh, we will do this, that, and the other. If you map frequently, you can start to uh, see the movement of pipes if there is any, and then redirect your maintenance to points in the network where you expect failures to be happening sooner rather than later. So that creates a dynamic uh, maintenance um, element to it, and that reduces unnecessary maintenance. And maintenance cost, as we all know, is a large chunk of a utility's uh, budget for, for any infrastructure. So a bit more about high frequency data, as I mentioned. So using traditional surveying or locating technologies, uh, we, it typically yields a coordinate every few meters. In this case, we said three to five meters. Um, and the point frequency is not constant. It depends a little bit on the, the contours of the, the above ground, how often you can take a point, if there is any, 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 any blockages to, to be physically able to physically walk over the pipe. 
uh, it is more difficult to get. Uh, the ground conditions are sometimes uh, the reason why a regular frequency is not possible. Um, so the surveyor determines the frequency depending on the situation in the field. Using gyroscopic technology or gyro mapping, you basically log at 100 hertz. As I said, we don't need to trace from above, so the tool just passes through the pipe and it creates a point pretty much every centimeter. So that's a high frequency, a much higher frequency points. So the best way to show you how that benefits, who could benefit you, is to run you through a couple of, uh, of uh, case studies. And we have three. We're mapping a bundle of cable ducts prior to dredging a canal. And we're locating, uh, there's a second one, is locating a damage in a larger diameter water main. And the third one is assessing the grade of a gravity sewer. So let's jump into the first one. So here we see, this is back in 2013, we see a, a line that was the line in the GIS platform of the network owner. And there were two manholes, as you see over here, these type of manholes is a data duct, by the way, it's a, it's a, a 40 millimeter ID duct, uh, the standard DN50 size pipe. And there were two manholes, one here and one here. And the line in the, in the GIS was as such, but the owners already knew that was incorrect because they could see when they opened the duct that the pipe was coming in from the south, not from the side. So they knew this line was just a placeholder, but they had no idea how it went from uh, from A to B. They had expected something like this, that it was that it was drilled in a. They knew it was horizontal drilling, of course, but it, it was drilled in in a curve so that they could come up underneath the ground and go into the duct. So we went in with a DR2 tool, and what we found was actually that. The horizontal drilling went all the way to this parking lot and then it was just trenched back to the road like that so this is a huge deviation from the information that was present in the gis platform now you may say hey that's funny or whatever but what's the importance of this all well first of all there's two things that is important number one it's uh it goes underneath private property which is sometimes a big issue um particularly for, for, for uh, data ducts and other, you know, other activities. But secondly, today this is a parking lot. Tomorrow it could be a building. And if this owner, asset owner was asked, okay, can you tell me where your network is? And they would, they would give a, 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 a guesstimate that it was the curve. Then they say, no, 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 we're not in the parking lot. We're somewhere near the canal. Well, let's see, this is 2013. Let's see what happened. So this is the current situation, 2022. And you see they build a building here and this parking lot has been extended. So for sure, they have been working in and around this infrastructure, which is only you know less than a meter deep. But at least they could tell the customer or the, the contractor where their, inf their assets were when they were rebuilding this area. And that's the critical thing. You want to reduce the damage to your infrastructure. And hey, I may be in the way, <laughs> but at least I know where I am and please don't uh, don't destroy my, my infrastructure. So that was an important finding for the short term. The short term purpose of the measurement was to, to find the depth here to, because they were gonna dredge the canal. But secondary, this information about, you know, a completely uh, different location of the asset helped them seven years or eight years later to prevent damage to their network as they were building out that parking lot. The second look, uh, uh, case that I have is locating potential damage in a large diameter water. This one is a little bit complex, but basically it's, it's, back, it's back in the Netherlands. Um, there is a huge uh, water main running here. That's, that's not, that was known already. That's, not, that's nothing secret about that. Um, and, and fortunately, this, this satellite picture was taken quite close after we did the job here. Can you still see the area where there was some work done? Uh, the challenging thing here was twofold. Uh, number one, uh, the pipe was uh, uh, only had one access point over here. There was no access point over there. This, this is a horizontal drilling, by the way. 
And the second one, it's a large diameter pipe, one meter 40, I believe it was internal, and it was waterlogged. Now, the issue here was that this dike, this is a dike, so this land is lower than the, than the water, uh, it started to sink over here, where you see that repair patch. It started to sink. And the question was, of course, is the pipe underneath causing the dike to sink? Um, and that was the suspicion. It just couldn't be proven because any existing technology, like a camera or something, couldn't go in because of the what it was waterlogged and it was invisible. Everything in the visibility was very low. So they wanted to, um, they, you know, they, they they came to us said, "Can you help us out to find out if there is a any 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 you know any issue with the pipe anywhere underneath the dike?" So we went in and we found a solution. Uh, so these are, by the way, the red line is our mapping result. I'll come back to that later. Um, from Street View here, you see again that that repair patch and the projected line across that. Um, but anyway, we had we were only interested in the in the 76 to 90 meter uh, distance from start, just to see what's happening there. Um, here you have a picture of the access point. In fact, the, the water level was so high that it actually came out of the pipe. The pipe is open, so you can understand it's a, it's not going to be a uh, it's a, it's not going to be a very clean uh, clean view inside. And in order to get ourselves past that point, we used an ROV. So we we lowered our tool into the pipe. We had a company that runs ROVs. They grabbed. We made a special device here that it could be grabbed by the ROV, and the ROV pull pushed us basically all the way up to this point. We were sure then we were past the uh, past the the damage, and then it let go the uh, the the tool, and the tool was pulled back gradually past the point of damage into the front. And then the 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 the, the pullback is actually the uh, uh, the recording of the uh, of the of the profile of the pipe. Okay, that's how we've done it. It was very creative and very and in the end. Successful. So as I said, this is the total depth profile of the and, and 160 meters we ended up measure, um, measuring, uh, but we are only interested into the 76 to 90 meter from the start uh, area, which is the part that goes under the dike. So let's focus on that. So here we see the profile of that particular section if we use a three meter point interval. Yeah, and I said before, that's more or less like the locating intervals that you get. And, you know, okay, let's be clear. This is um, eight, 55, no, 45 centimeters from here to here. And this is 116, uh, uh, sorry, this is um, 16 meters. So it's the depth profile is a little bit stretched out for, for your benefit. But here, you know, if you look at this, there's nothing spectacular to see. It's very plausible that this is a very uh, intact uh, horizontal drilling. So let's start increasing the point frequency to see if we can find out a little bit more. So if we go to one meter interval, now we already start to see some movement in the pipe, which is suspicious. So we see, for example, here a six, a six centimeter drop over a one meter length. Now we know this is a horizontal drilling and that is an unlikely steering activity that, uh, that a horizontal drill string can make. Yet it's not conclusive that six centimeters over one meter is going to be um, a cause of damage or a cause of leakage of the pipe. So let's increase the point frequency a bit further to 10 centimeters. Now all of a sudden, we see that there is a clear drop here. The tool fell or fell down. It it it, it ran off a, 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 ridge, ridge, a ledge and started running again. And in fact, a little bit further on, on the other side of the dike, we see two more spots appearing that are clearly not horizontal drilling uh, related uh, bends. So, um, you know, at 10 centimeters, we clearly see that there is a drop here of uh, a good six centimeters over a very very short distance if we go even further to a one centimeter interval we see that that jump is more you know more articulated it's more clear that it really the tool went down and then went on again 
and over here there probably is just something similar happening over here and, and over here that's suspicious so there's a bit more detail at one centimeter compared to 10 centimeters but no real new insights we knew that there were three locations that were suspicious so as a result the uh, uh the a diver went in in fact and went to those points and did find that the pipe was broken on two places they did some temporary uh, repairs and in and decided in the end that this whole entire horizontal drilling had to be replaced because it wasn't sure that this uh, repair would uh, stop the problem long term so they decided to install a new horizontal drilling uh, at a later date so it was a very successful outcome and it would have never been um, discovered had not had we not had the very high frequency mapping the third case is, is assessing a great uh, uh, the grade of a, a gravity sewer. So here we have uh, a new gravity sewer development, uh, and um, it's, it's made up of a number of segments, many different ones. They were all line drillings, um, and and some of them are, they were not all line drillings. Some of them are actually trenched. In fact, the 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 discussion I'm going to have with you is is I think on this section here, which was a trenched section. Now the issue is not so much you know this is a very populated area or anything the issue was the ground condition it's very very soft clay as you can see the water you know it, 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 the water stays on top of it. it it was very very muddy and the owner of the pipeline was worried that okay as the trench was open he could see the uh, the pipe laying at the right grade but as they were backfilling it and running over it with heavy machinery did anything happen to the pipe um, in terms of grade. So uh, after full completion of the installation, we had just the manholes left. We went in with a, with a, with a probe like that, with a kind of a skateboard setup, and um, we mapped the, uh, a number of these segments. I'm just going to discuss one of the segments that, uh, that we mapped. So here you see the result of the mapping. The blue line, get my mouse. So this blue line here is the depth profile. And okay, it's a high frequency depth profile. It's in fact, we're at 10 centimeters per point uh, per sample. So you see every little movement, but you already see that it's far from perfectly straight. Now, again, I have to say this entire drop here is uh 14 14 centimeters on a 90 meter length so this graph has been pulled uh you know to its maximum view to for your for, for the benefit of being able to visualize what's happening with this line now if we just used the uh, zero inclination as a mark demarcation point we just want to know where is it in, where is it inclining up or down then you see that in a number of quite a number of places it's everything is red uh it's, it's inclining upward which is bad and everywhere where it's green it's inclining downwards which is good now if we increase the or or decrease i would say the point frequency from 10 centimeters to one meter we still see, we still see the fine, the fine details lost, but we still see these significant upward inclinations uh, quite well compared to the previous view. Of course, we have less points, but there where it's inclining up, we can still determine that at a one meter point, yet the, the fine details are lost. So if we go to a three meter point interval, all of a sudden we see that most of the upward inclinations are lost there's a severe loss of detail only two very small ones left and it could even be waved away as saying there's no problem and at five meter interval 
complete loss of detail. So this is really a very good way of showing you, and let me show you that a little bit faster, what the point frequency can do to helping you understand what is happening infrastructure. Yeah. If I was a contractor, I would give a five point meter, five meter point interval. But if I'm an owner, I wouldn't want to have that. So that summarizes the introduction to the inertial navigation technology and the benefit of high frequency points. I hope I've been able to shed a, a light on the uh, on the benefits of, of using inertial navigation and, and, and having those points available. Uh, I remember that you have to, you know, just don't take the risk, just get it mapped. And if you get it mapped, get it mapped with as much detail as you can. If you don't need it today, you may need it tomorrow. And it's the easiest time when you build a network to go in a pot, into a pipe and obtain the data. So I thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if there's any questions, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask. Thank you very much.